Hello, my dear wonderful viewers. Welcome back to our YouTube channel Escalenta Science. Today, I am going to discuss about food colors in food industry. Let's delve into the world of food colors. Would you drink black water? Clear Pepsi? How about using pink butter or green ketchup? Believe it or not, these products actually existed, and not that long ago either. But there is a reason these food fads did not last. Consumers prefer that the color of food matches its flavor. The link between color and taste is logical. Since oranges are orange, we expect orange-colored drinks to be orange-flavored. Red drinks should taste like cherries, and purple drinks should taste like grapes. If a food is multicolored, it could be moldy and should not be eaten, unless you are eating blue cheese, which gets its distinct flavor from mold. An astonishing amount of the foods we eat is processed. These foods are altered from their natural states to make them safe, say, to remove harmful bacteria, or to make them appealing, and to prolong their shelf life. About 70% of the diet of the average U.S. resident is from processed foods. Much of what we eat would not look appealing if it was not colored. Think of food coloring as cosmetics, for your food. Without coloring, hot dogs would be gray. Now, let's see about natural food colorings. To avoid so much processed food, some people have advocated using natural food colorings whenever possible. Natural food dyes have been used for centuries to color food. Some of the most common ones are carotenoids, chlorophyll, anthocyanin, and turmeric. Carotenoids have a deep red, yellow, or orange color. Probably, the most common carotenoid is beta-carotene, which is responsible for the bright orange color of sweet potatoes and pumpkins. Since beta-carotene is soluble in fat, it is a great choice for coloring dairy products, which typically have a high fat content. So, beta-carotene is often added to margarine and cheese. Chlorophyll is another natural pigment found in all green plants. This molecule absorbs sunlight and uses its energy to synthesize carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water. This process is known as photosynthesis and is the basis of life on Earth. Mint or lime-flavored foods, such as candy and ice cream, are sometimes colored using chlorophyll. The best natural source for deep purple and blue colors is anthocyanin. Grapes, blueberries, and cranberries owe their rich color to this organic compound. Unlike beta-carotene, anthocyanins, which form a class of compounds rather than a single chemical compound, are soluble in water, so they can be used to color water-based products. Blue corn chips, brightly colored soft drinks, and jelly are often dyed with anthocyanins. More than 500 different anthocyanins have been isolated from plants. They are all based on a single basic core structure, the flavillium ion. This ion contains three six-carbon rings, as well as many hydroxyl groups that make the molecule polar and water-soluble. Another natural food additive you have probably consumed is turmeric, which is added to mustard to impart a deep yellow color. Turmeric is obtained from the underground stem of a plant that grows in India, and it is commonly used as a spice in Indian food. Many US food companies are using turmeric and other natural spices to color their products. Now, let's see a different side of food colors. 
The next time you enjoy strawberry flavored yogurt or cranberry juice, you may be eating bugs. But don't worry, these insects did not contaminate your food by accident. That is an extract from a type of insect, known as the cochineal, was deliberately added by the food manufacturer. For centuries, the Aztecs used these insects to dye fabrics a deep red color. If you crush up 70,000 of these bugs, you can extract a pound of a deep red dye called carminic acid. This dye is safe to ingest, so it found its way into a variety of food and cosmetic products that required a red color. However, the thought of eating bugs is unappealing to some people. To find out if your food contains bugs, look for carmin, carminic acid, cochineal, or natural red 4 on the ingredient label. While these substances are typically considered safe, in rare instances, people can have a severe allergic reaction to them, leading to a life-threatening condition called anaphylactic shock. So, why we bother with artificial or synthetic food colorings? Aren't there enough natural colors to go around? A big reason to go artificial is cost. Synthetic dyes can be mass-produced at a fraction of the cost of gathering and processing the materials used to make natural food colorings. Another reason is shelf life. Artificial food dyes might be longer lasting than natural ones of the same color. Also, although nature produces an impressive hue of colors, those suitable for use as a food dye are limited. But there is no limit to the variety of colors that can be artificially produced in a lab. Considering the thousands of different substances that color our food, it may come as a surprise to discover that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration granted approval to just seven synthetic food colorings for widespread use in food. Here you can see them in the table. What makes a good food coloring? First, when added to water, it must dissolve. If the dye is not soluble in water, it does not mix evenly. Food coloring molecules are usually ionic solids, that is, they contain positive and negative ions, which are held together by ionic bonds. When one of these solids dissolves in water, the ions that form the solid are released into the solution, where they become associated with the polar water molecules, which have partially negative and partially positive charges. Another important property of food coloring is that when it is dissolved in water, the color remains. The reason this happens is that food coloring molecules absorb some wavelengths of light and let others pass through, resulting in the color we see. Food coloring molecules typically contain long swaths of alternating single and double bonds that allow electrons in these molecules to be excited at relatively low energy. The energy required for an electron to jump from that excited state to the ground state corresponds to the energy of visible light, which is why food coloring molecules can absorb light from the visible spectrum. It is tempting to think that natural products are healthier than artificial ones. But that is not always the case. Cochineal extract is not the only natural dye that can pose a health risk. Serious allergic reactions have also been reported with annatto and saffron, yellow food colorings derived from natural products. So, what will the food of the future look like? Some advocacy groups, such as the Center for Science in the Public Interest, seek to ban all food coloring because of limited evidence showing that food coloring encourages children to eat junk food. Others envision a different future. One company, has already manufactured an edible spray paint, called Food Finish, which can be applied to any food. It comes in red, blue, gold, and silver colors. Eating involves more than just taste. It is a full sensory experience. Both food scientists and chefs will tell you that the smell, sound, feel, and, yes, the sight of your food are just as important as taste to fully appreciate what you eat. That Slurpee would not taste the same if it did not dye your tongue an electric blue. You really can't help watching what you eat. So, this is the brief overview of food colors. 
If you need any clarifications, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching.